Hello students, myself Dr. Sachin Gurule, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology, KTHM College, Nasik. In the previous video of subject, Animal Diversity 3rd, we have started the chapter number 2nd. The name of chapter is Introduction to Group Protocol Data. And in that lecture, we have already learned the silent features of group Ocrania which is also referred as the protocol data. Now in this lecture, we are going to learn the silent features of the subphylum, that is the classification of the protocordates and the subphylums of the Ocrania or the protocord data, that is three subphylum, hemichordata, eurochordata and cephalochordata. So let's start with the silent features of subphylum of the Ocrania, so called as protocordata. Now, on the basis of position of notochord group Ocrania or protocordata is divisible into the three subphylum, and these three subphylum are the hemichordata, eurochordata, and cephalochordata. The hemichordata are the deuterostomes. The meaning of deuterostom we have already learned during the embryonic development whatever blastopore is there if that blastopore is going to give rise to the formation of anus that is referred as the deuterostom. So these hemichordates are the deuterostom with the pharyngeal gill slits and mostly having the dorsal nerve cord. However, they are lacking the notochord as adults all or nearly all hemichordates are the benthic marine animals. So these are the silent features or the main characteristic features for the hemichordates. While in case of the eurochordate, eurochordates or they are also referred as the tunicates, they are also marine organisms. They are filter feeding animals and the most prominent tunicates are the sea squid, which shows the affinity to other chordates only in the juvenile stage means they represent a characters of chordate only into the juvenile stage that is the presence of notochord but after when they are developed into the adult the some characters they are loosed the adult sea squids are sessile globular or tubular animals and often with prominent incurrent and excurrent siphon and through that siphon the intake and outtake of the water it is generally take place and many kinds of this organism they grows in a colony. So these are the features of the eurochordate. And the third one is the cephalochordata. In the cephalochordata is the small group of fish like acrinate called as lancelate. As if you see in this diagram the animals belongs to that cephalochordata they are looks like a lancet hence they are commonly referred as the lancelets. They are rarely exceeds the 5 centimeter in length means comparatively these are very smaller organism and their notochord extends the entire body length throughout their lives means here in case of this protocordatum that is cephalochordata their notochord is extend entire body length and it is present throughout the life. The lancelet lives partly buried in a soft marine sediments. So these are the features or distinct feature for the subphylum cephalochordata. So today we are only going to discuss with the detailed silent features of the first subphylum that is hemichordata. So let's see first of all the hemichordata. Now that word hemichordata is coming from the Greek origin and its etymology if you study it is derived from the two words hemi means half and chordae means chord refers to the half chordate. Now why half chordate? Let's see what are the silent features. So notochord in case of this hemichordate is doubtful. It is short and it is confined to the proboscis and non-homologous to the other chordates. So that's why they are referred as a hemichordates and their notochord is a doubtful one. 
Now the hemichordates are marine organism, solitary or colonial. Means they are living into the colonies or they may live alone. They are soft-bodied animals and worm-like, tuberculous animal living into the sandy or muddy sea bottoms and in characteristic the U-shaped burrow. So here in this diagram you can see, so these are the benthic animal living at the bottom of seas into the burrows and that if you see the that burrows of this animal is a characteristically U-shaped which is a again characteristic one. Now next character, the body is bilaterally symmetrical and is a triploblastic. Bilaterally symmetrical means you will found a similar kind of the organ at the left and right side. And the triploblastic means there are presence of three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So when all the three germ layers are present, such animals we are referred to it as the triploblastic animals. So all hemichordates are bilaterally symmetrical and the triploblastic organism. The next character, the body is segmented but divisible, uh, body is not segmented but divisible into the three distinct region and these three distinct region are referred as the proboscis, collar and the trunk region. Then body wall has a single layered epidermis which is again characteristic feature so they has the epidermis which is made up of a layer of single layer cells. The buccal diverticulum rises from the roof of the buccal cavity which projects into the proboscis silom. It was earlier regarded as the notochord but that is actually not the notochord as their notochord is only restricted towards the proboscis region. The animals they are ciliary filter feeder organism means they are provided with a such kind of the structure at the mouth part which is responsible for creating a water current in which the food particle is get trapped and then it is get consumed into the mouth cavity. Such a kind of the feeding is referred as the filter feeding. So all the animals belongs to this group is the filter feeder animals and the elementary canal is a complete one. So this elementary canal is either straight or U-shaped tube. So if you see the again further classification of this subphylum hemichordata, the subphylum hemichordata again is divisible into the two classes. First class is enteropinasta and second one is a pterobranchia. In case of the enteropinasta, if you see the elementary canal, their elementary canal is a straight tube. So here in this diagram, you can see so the, this is a mouth and this one is an anus. From the mouth, whatever elementary canal is there, it is a straight one. Okay, which is the characteristic feature of the class Enteropinasta, which are provided with a complete digestive system that is elementary canal and it is a straight tube. While in the second class, which is known as a pterobranchia, the elementary canal is also complete. But here, if you see the elementary canal, it is a U-shape. So here you can found a mouth in this diagram. And this is one is the elementary canal and here it turns or it bend upward and here it opens as the anus. Now if you see overall or general shape of the elementary canal it is a u-shaped. So this is a major distinction between the two classes that is enteropinasta with the straight elementary canal and pterobranchia with u-shaped elementary canal. The respiration is occurs through a many permanent paired gill slits. The paired gill slits are present on dorsolateral side of anterior part of the trunk region. And the gill slits are absent in some forms while only one pair may be present in few other forms. Means there is a variation in number of gill slits present in an animal. In some cases it may be absent, in some cases their number may be high or in other cases there is only a single pair of gill slit is there and that having the function known as the respiration. The next characteristic feature is nervous system. The nervous system is of primitive type. The nervous tissue is embedded in the epidermis and occurs both dorsally and ventrally. Now what exactly the primitive kind of nervous system? 
when nervous system is consist of a ganglion or the nerve nervous system is a ganglionated such a kind of nervous system is referred as the primitive type of the nervous system so these animal they are having such a kind of the primitive features regarding the nervous system then regarding next character that is circulatory system the circulatory system is simple and open type now open type in the sense there is no any kind of the vessel through which the blood is flow if there is no vessel and if blood is runs along with the coelom is only then such a kind of the circulatory system we are referred as the open type of circulatory system it consists primarily a dorsal and ventral uh, blood vessel which are contractile and lined by the endothelium and these vessels communicates with the sinuses and lacunae found in the different parts of the body a contractile heart vesicle is situated at the base of proboscis above the central sinus of the dorsal vessel but these dorsal vessels are not completely connected with one another so there is a cess of blood out of these vessels also and hence this system is referred as the open type of circulatory system the next character is regarding excretory system the excretion is by protonephric kidney the protonephric kidney we have already discussed into the previous lecture the protonephric kidney is the most basic form of the kidney among the chordate organism and this protonephric kidney that are in the form of single glomerulus and they lie into the proboscis so this is the condition with the excretory system in case of the hemichordates the next character is about the sexes the sexes are separate sometimes they are may be united to form the hermaphrodite condition and the gonads are one to several pair mean the number of gonads that is testes or ovaries their number is greatly varies from species to species or organism to organism but the their number is ranges from one to several pair then sexual reproduction is also seen in this organism when we referred as a sexual reproduction there is a involvement of the male and female gamete when the gametes are formed then their fusion which gives rise to the next progeny then such a reproduction we called as the sexual reproduction so they exhibit a sexual reproduction and development mostly indirect with a free swimming larva and the larva of hemichordate is referred as tornaria larva okay so this tornaria larva is the larval form in case of the hemichordate organism so these are the silent features of subphylum hemichordata and the examples of hemichordata are balanoglossus saccoglossus rhabdopleura and atubaria so these are the few examples which are included into the hemichordates so of which we are going to discuss a very short features of the two example first one is balanoglossus and second one is the rhabdopleura so let's see first of all the balanoglossus balanoglossus is commonly known as the acron worm and is a member of class enteropunasta enteropunasta which is characterized by having a straight elementary canal that is enteropunasta it is a tuberculous marine animal inhabits shallow water between the tide marks along the coast of warm and temperate oceans it may be it may conceal under the stone sea weeds or excavate its own burrow in sandy or muddy bottom and the most characteristic feature that is their burrow is u shaped or they are living into the u shaped burrow having the depth of about 50 to 75 cm with an opening of 10 to 30 cm apart from one another then regarding body characters the body is obviously the soft is elongated and worm like and cylindrical so here in this diagram you can see the body is worm like is elongated one and the cylindrical also the body is unsegmented but it is divisible into the three parts and these three parts are proboscis collar and trunk so here in this diagram you can see so this portion is referred as a proboscis then second one is a collar and next part is referred as the 
trunk region. The proboscis is anterior most short conical or club shaped body part. It has a thick muscular wall but it, it is hollow from inside. The collar is also known as the mesosome which is the second body part which is the middle short and muscular but it is the cylindrical part of the body and the third portion this is referred as trunk. The trunk is also referred as the metasoma which is the posterior longest part of the body and again further it is divisible into the anterior region which is known as anterior branchiogenital region where the branchial means respiratory structure and genital wing it consists of reproductive structure which are included into the first part. That first part is referred as the branchiogenital region. Then second region or the middle region is referred as the hepatic region. So which consists of the parts of the digestive gland <clears throat> like a, a liver. Here it is referred as here you can see the hepatic cica is there and this is the middle region known as the hepatic region. And third region of the trunk which is the posterior one and this is referred as the abdominal region. So this is about the first example belongs to that uh, hemichordata that is the balanoglossus. Then second example of this subphylum is the rhabdopleura. Now this rhabdopleura is a true colonial form belongs to class pterobranchia. Pterobranchia which has the characteristic feature that is their elementary canal is u-shaped. It is exclusively marine organism that is they are living only into the seas and the ocean. They are sedentary and colonial. Colonial in the sense they are living into the large colonies. They are found into the Berlin Sea, Norwegian Sea, then North Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Seas. The colony, it consists of horizontal branching gelatinous tubes forming a conosium which is attached either to the stone or corals molluscan shell or the sponges. So the, these are the tube like structures or gelatinous tube. They are get attached to the any kind of the substratum that substratum may be stony may be formed in the form of corals dead corals then molluscan shell and even the sponges also. It has been found at the depth at ranging 5 meters to 896 meters but most commonly there occurs at the depth of 100 to 300 meters. The colony has thin horizontal branching tube which is known as the conosium. So here you can see this is a conosium from which a short erect tube arises each containing a zooid. So this is a zooid and this is a magnified view. So this is a conosium and this one is a zooid. The height of erect tube is measures about 6 to 7 millimeter. So the height of this tube is about 6 to 7 millimeter. The tube has a ringed membranous and are secreted by the zooid only. So whatever tubes are there, the tubes are secreted by the zooid itself for the purpose of protection. A single zooid is a minute just 1 millimeter long and occupies the distal portion of the tube. So this is the distal portion of the tube and it occupies the distal portion and again it is also divided into the three region that is this proboscis then second one is a collar and third one is a trunk. So in this way the body of this rhabdopleura is also divided into the proboscis, collar and the trunk region. Now every zooid is attached to the black stolon black stolon by a long contractile stalk. So here in this diagram you can see so this is a black stolon to which the number of tubes or number of zooids are get attached and this they are attached with that of the long contractile stalk with the help of which they are withdrawn into the conosium. So these are the characteristic feature of the second example belongs to the hemichordata, belongs to the class pterobranchia that is rhabdopleura. So with this we have completed the silent features of subphylum uh, hemichordata and their two examples. 
Thank you. Thank you very much.